Hey Math 31, welcome to chapter three. So we're going to be looking at functions in chapter three, everything having to do with functions. And the first thing we wanna pick up is what is a function and what is function notation? So in this section, we're gonna determine whether a relation represents a function. We're going to use the vertical line test to identify functions. We'll find function values and we'll determine whether a function is one to one. And I want us to look at our basic toolkit functions that are in your book, and I'll, I'll reference that once we get to that last learning outcome. So, so let's dive in. So a relation is a set of ordered pairs. A function is a relation in which, for each distinct value of the first component of the ordered pairs, there is exactly one value of the second component. So just a note, for any ordered pair x, y, the value of y depends on the value of x. And we call x the independent variable, or maybe you call it the input value. y gets labeled, or it gets the vocab term of dependent variable, or output value. So how this works is every function is automatically a relation, but not every relation is a function. So any set of ordered pairs, I don't care what they look like, we'll call them a relation. But if with that set of ordered pairs, if every x value has exactly one y value, then we'll call it a function. And why do you wanna be a function? Oh my goodness, look at the word inside a function. They're fun. Plus we have a whole slew of theorems and properties that apply to functions that don't apply to relations. So while this all sounds, sounds fine, fine and good, basically what we're going to do is we're gonna be looking at each of these ordered pairs. For right now, we're gonna start with ordered pairs. Eventually we'll move beyond that to lines and parabolas and all sorts of relationships, but we're gonna look at ordered pairs and we're gonna make sure that every x value gets mapped to exactly one y value. We don't want an x value getting mapped to two different y values or two or more different y values. So with that, I'm gonna scooch the page up and let's take a look at example one. All right, so what we wanna do is I gave us a list of ordered pairs. And this is, again, this is just starter function problems. We're going to move beyond ordered pairs. But, but with these ordered pairs, let's decide whether each relation defines a function. So again, any set of ordered pairs in A, B, or C, they're automatically relations because all relations are are sets of ordered pairs. And this is a set of ordered pairs. You see negative four, zero, negative three, one, and three, one. So I have three ordered pairs in here. And we want to look at the x-coordinates. So you see my x-coordinates here all happen to be distinct. That's great in terms of being a function because I don't have two ordered pairs here with the same x-coordinate getting mapped to different y-coordinates. And, and I'll show you an example of that. We'll see that in part b. But as you see here, negative four just gets mapped to zero. Negative three just gets mapped to one. Three just gets mapped to one. And you might say to yourself, well, hey, we had a repeat here. That's okay. The problem is when you have the repeat on the x-coordinate and it gets mapped to two different y-coordinates. All right, now the fact that we have a repeat in the y-coordinate, that'll come into play when we get into the fourth outcome where we talk about whether or not a function is one to one. But for right now, since I have every x coordinate or every input value getting mapped to exactly one output value, I would say yes, this is a function. And again, I would just take note, there were no repeated x values. And I'm gonna put a little happy face because that's a pretty good clue that we have a function. Again, this is just when we have a list of ordered pairs. When we start graphing things, and we could graph these if we want, but when we start graphing relations, we'll have a different metric. All right, let's scooch the page up so we can see the remaining two examples. So if we take a look at this, again, my spidey senses now are going off because you see two, three, and two, two. I want you to take note that we had a doubling up on an x coordinate, right? We had a repeated x value. This four and this five, they're fine, right? They're distinct. This is the only ordered pair with an x coordinate of four in my relation. This is the only ordered pair with an x coordinate of five in my relation. But this is the problem, all right? So two is getting mapped to two different y values. We would say this as, this is bad news bears. 
All right, it's a old, old movie, but it's now just become an expression, or at least in my, for my age group, it's an expression. I don't know if it is for yours still, but we got bad news bears here because two is getting mapped to two different Y values. It's getting mapped to three and it's getting mapped to five. So I would say on this front, no, this is not a function. Okay. All right, so with that, let's take a look at part or the, the relation in part C and see if we can figure out is this relation a function or not. So I'm gonna scooch this up just so we can see everything. And let's take a look at our x-coordinates. I've got negative four, zero, two, and negative four. And maybe you heard it. I had a repeated x value. And when we look at that repeated x value, there were two different y values, right? Negative four got mapped to three and negative four got mapped to negative three. So again, this is bad news. At least it's bad news in terms of whether or not this relation is a function. So on this front, I would say no. This is not a function. All right, so there's our first look as to whether relations are functions. We're gonna extend beyond uh, just making a list of ordered pairs and we're going to have different graphical representations of these ordered pairs and we will actually um, graph them and pick up the vertical line test. All right, I'll see you in a few. Bye.